So today we'll study about balanoglossus. Now balanoglossus is also referred to as the acorn worm or the tongue worm. But, but it is actually a chordate, not an annelid or a worm. And the, uh, this animal is a marine tuberculous animal which lives in burrows on the sea coast in the soft mud. Now the burrow is usually roughly about uh, U-shaped and it has two distinct openings. The anterior opening is funnel shaped and open and the second opening is circular and is plugged by means of the fecal material. Melanoglossus has a body which is worm like and is divisible into three parts. The first part is known as a proboscis. It's a conical structure or a triangular structure and opens to the outside by means of the proboscis pore and has inside it a little um, coelom or the proboscis space. At the base, the proboscis bears a short neck and that short neck is known as a proboscis stalk or the neck. And at the base of the proboscis stalk is present a little indentation or a groove and that helps to judge the water, the quality of water and just very in close proximity, very close to the uh, groove is present the mouth. But the proboscis neck, the groove and the mouth are hidden by the next part of the body which is a collar. The first part of the body is called uh, of the collar is called as a collaret. So this covers up the neck. And the collar inside has a space or a coelom which opens to the outside by means of the collar pores. The next part of the body is called as the trunk. Now this trunk is fairly large in comparison to the proboscis and the collar. And it is made up of three parts. The first part is known as a branchiogenital area because it lies, it houses the gonads as well as the gill pores. Now, first of all, we must understand that that a mid dorsal and a mid ventral ridge is present in the branchiogenital areas, and on either sides of which is present the gill pores. And at the sides, the branchiogenital region has uh, lateral flaps which are known as the genital wings and these are the portions of the body where the gonads are present. The next part of the body is called as the hepatic cica. Now the hepatic cica uh, region uh, has these blind pouches, round blind pouches called as the hepatic cicae. So below the branchiogenital region is present the hepatic CK region or the hepatic region and behind this hepatic region is present the post hepatic region. The post hepatic region is very long and tapers to form a, a tail and the tail opens to the outside by the anus. But this region, uh, the post hepatic region does not have any flaps, ridges or pouches on it. It is smooth. The surface is smooth. So this is about balanoglossus or the acorn worm or the tongue worm uh, whose body is divisible as I said into three parts that is proboscis, collar and the trunk. Proboscis has to summarize uh, the proboscis has the uh, proboscis silo opens to the outside by the proboscis pore and has a little short neck or the proboscis stalk, a little indentation which checks uh, for the content or quality of water. Next is the mouth and the next portion of the body behind the proboscis is the collar. It has a short collaret which covers up the proboscis stalk and, and the collar has the coelom, opens to the outside by means of the collar pores and behind the collar is the trunk. The trunk is divided into three parts. The first part is known as a branchiogenital region which has the lateral wings and these house the gonads. It has one single 
mid ventral uh, and one uh, single mid dorsal ridge and um, at the sides of the ridge are present the gill pores and behind the branchogenital region is present the hepatic region which has the hepatic ck and below that is the region which is smooth which does not have any genital flaps or lateral prolongations no ck no ridges so this smooth region is called as the post hepatic region it ends in the anus so this is about the acorn 1